It's time once again for that business show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNZ, where business becomes show business. Now, live in studio and promoting the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the American economy, your host, Jamie Maloney. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to that business show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Thanks for tuning in this uh, early Tuesday morning to that business show. Keep in mind, you can find this show on here five days a week at five days a week at five days a week. I mean, my voice is still tripping from a sore throat there, so I'm getting over a little bit of a cold. But again, weekdays at 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ. And um, this show is all about our business owners, entrepreneurs, and people making a difference in and around the Tampa Bay community. So again, thanks for tuning in. And as always, learn more about the show over at my website, tampabayradio.com, where you can catch all of my past shows. And also, you'll notice that I sell real estate on the uh, site. So you can peruse all the uh, area listings and all of my uh, pre-listed properties as well. Also, uh, look me up on all the different social networking sites. I invite you to please uh, follow me over on Twitter under the uh, handle Jamie underscore Maloney and uh, Facebook where we put all the uh, show updates and uh, upcoming guests as well as the uh, website uh, facebook.com forward slash that business show. I got a great guest in studio today and he's going to be uh, with me the entire hour and I'm going to go ahead and bring him in because we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, Dr. Adam Shiner is a world renowned laser eyelid and cosmetic surgeon specializing in the treatment of festoons, a pervasive condition that is often misdiagnosed. He's based in Tampa, but patients fly from around the world for procedures like his proprietary reset procedure for festoons. His approach to facial rejuvenation known as perfect proportions is broadly recognized for its powerful yet natural results. He has been a featured health expert on the Dr. Oz show and the doctors and the New York Post, Fox, CBS, ABC, and NBC. Dr. Shiner, welcome to the show today. Well, thank you so much. Great to be here. And that's quite an impressive resume there. And you've got an extensive background, obviously, in in, in medical uh, in the medical profession. So first of all, I want to talk to you about uh, your journey to becoming a uh, you know specialist in the laser island plastic surgery business. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I'm here in Tampa, but I came originally from the Northeast. And then I went to school in Philadelphia. When I was uh, training in Philadelphia, I actually uh, got paired with um, some facial surgeons, you know, in medical school, and I found that so interesting at the time that I that was what I really chose to pursue. And it's kind of funny growing up because we were watching MASH when we were all growing up, right? Mm -hmm. And so back then, I knew I wanted to become a doctor at a very young age, and I, at first I thought I wanted to become a surgeon. And then MASH had on a, a psychiatrist at one point. I said, well, that's what I wanted to do. And then, and then they then actually when I was uh, uh, growing up, there was this series that came out about the brain, so I thought I wanted to become a neurosurgeon. And then it's interesting the way you sort of evolve, but the facial surgery is what I really love doing. I love the creativity involved with it. So your inspiration was a mash then, would you say? Early on. <laughs> in I think in terms of medicine, yes. And then, you know, we have great mentors in our lives, right, that inspire us to want to pursue different careers. And I was paired with some amazing people that really, you know, put me on the path that I am today. Okay. And what is uh, your uh, education uh, background? Where did you study uh, medicine and uh, this? Right. So I, I went to medical school at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I did uh, my residency there, too. And then I did a fellowship in uh, laser eyelid and facial plastic surgery out in uh, Oklahoma City with a person named Sterling Baker, um, who was a real pioneer in this whole world of using lasers for facial aesthetics. Right. And uh, is this something, I mean, did you always want to be in the medical profession uh, growing up? Was I mean, is that something that you realized from a young age that you were definitely going to be in the medical profession? Yeah, I think we had, we had an uncle who was uh, prominent in the medical field. And so, you know, my brother and myself, we and my sister, we all became uh, in the medical profession. Yeah, and your your business here is uh, now based in Tampa, but you're pulling in patients uh, from around the world, and we'll talk a little bit more about your specialty here in just a little bit. But tell me a little bit about how you got you know into your own practice and everything. Right. So actually, I'm I'm in a practice here in Tampa, and I actually have partners in that practice. Um, interestingly, I've been doing I have a specialty in eyelid and facial plastic surgery, and I've been doing this for years. And uh, it turns out we'll talk about it, but our faces are really important for how we communicate with one another. And so sometimes when our faces are changing, it doesn't really give the best uh, message out there. So I have this specialty fixing uh, faces and eyelids specifically. And I've been doing this for years. Um, interestingly, I had a colleague of mine who was uh, based out in Beverly Hills, and he was on a show called The Doctors. And so this was before I even, th even thought of being on this show. And he did surgery on the, it was the producer's father-in-law. And he did surgery on this person, and they featured on the show. And this guy had terrible eyelid festoons. 
And uh, interestingly, I at the time, I was really impressed with my friend, and I called him and said, this is great uh, that you're on the show, but he didn't do anything to fix the festoons. And he said to me, uh, you know, Adam, uh, there's we can't fix festoons. I'm like, and his name is Guy. I said, no, Guy, I fix them all the time. He says, well, I'm writing a book chap chapter. Says, Would you like to write a book chapter on this idea of treating eyewood festoons? I said, sure. And so... I created a, um, the editors of the book wanted me to create a movie to go along with a book chapter. And so I filmed myself doing this festoon procedure. I edited it, put it up on YouTube for the editors to see. And within a day or so, it was all over the internet. And that sort of started it. And then the media started finding me, and, and there we are today. Now, you're using a term that's uh, not familiar to me. And, I, I mean, I, I've learned about it as I studied uh, your your site and your talking points last night, as I do with all my guests uh, the day before the show. But what is a festoon? Yeah, festoons are this term that we give to swollen mounds that can form in the lower eyelid and the cheek. Um, they're usually related to sun exposure, um, and they can, they can wax and wane. And they've been traditionally a really hard... Uh, condition to treat. Um, a lot of people will have surgery to fix lower eyelid bags. They don't want to look tired, right? Um, but one of the issues is that if they don't fix the festoons at the same time, and a lot of time they're there, uh, it looks it looks awkward and it doesn't look like it's the best result. And so this this festoon has been kind of challenging for physicians to treat for many years. And I'm really thankful I have this technique that's been helpful in helping people with it. So festoons aren't eye bags necessarily. They are not. They, everybody, or not, I would say everybody, but a lot of people have the, the eye bag condition. To, even myself, I was mentioned to you off the air growing up that uh, a lot of people asked me when I was growing up if had I gotten into a fight because I have these dark bags underneath my eyes. And I think they've kind of gotten better because people don't ask me that as much now. But, uh, <laughs> right. so, but uh, a festoon is a condition that's uh, you know sort of like eye bags uh, that are uh, amplified. Right. And it's really, actually, it forms a little bit lower, usually on the cheek. And these swollen mounds that form on the cheek. And sometimes they're worst in the morning. People wake up and they have these swollen pouches on their cheeks and people will try ice packs and neti pots and other things to get them to resolve. Um, the, what my research has really shown is a lot of this has a, uh, a relation to past sun exposure. And the sun, well, we can talk about that a lot here today too, but the sun is not the greatest actor in our lives. And the sun can actually fracture um, elastic fibers in our face. And I think that's what happens there is why we get those the swellings there, we actually fracture the elastic fibers that keep the skin together. In my technique, I'm actually get the skin to regrow itself back in a healthier state, and that healthier state actually has new collagen elastic fibers that tighten that area. Yeah, we're going to talk about your uh, technique here in just a little bit, but I want to I want to cover first of all uh, just uh, basic eye uh, uh, eye bag treatments, non surgical per, uh, you know treatments for these, and how people can can uh, you know take care of these uh, you know in a non surgical manner. And uh, so let's talk about like the importance of uh, salt uh, you know on eye bags. Tell me about how salt influences the eye bags and people so you know what I what are eye bags right the bags that form underneath the eye are really um, fat pads that um, come forward the fat is usually held back by uh, this membrane called the orbital septum and sometimes through birth it can be set a little forward there's some people in their teenage years who have bags like this but a lot of times it's more with age this membrane starts to attenuate or bow forward and the fat comes forward well any sort of salt that we take in our body allows us to retain more fluid and that will cause that to swell a little bit. So, you know, salt is uh, is not great for the appearance of eye bags. Okay, so one way to treat eye bags is to uh, reduce salt in the diet. I mean, uh, reducing salt is uh, good in a number of things, including blood pressure. Correct, exactly. And there's never really a good time to increase salt in a diet, at least not on the American diet. And That's so, right. Um, talk to me about how allergies and medicines uh, affect eye bags in people. Allergies also. So if you have swelling around the eyes because of allergies, that swelling will also get attracted to the fat pads there and cause them to swell. So that's another reason why they become more prominent. I mean, the, the allergies don't bring it. The eye bags are really more anatomic, and things can make them more noticeable or less noticeable, but they can always be there. But these things we're talking about right now are things that make them just a little bit more swollen at the time, but they're still there, though. And you mentioned a uh, term and also something that I was uh, reading about last night, a netapot. What is a netapot? Yeah, and I didn't know this at all before until I heard one of my patients talking about it. It's this uh, pot that people will, um, they'll, they'll actually put their face over it and they'll, they'll bring fluid through their nose and out their nose as a way to sort of clear out the sinuses. And is that actually, is that effective? I mean, or is that just it's, kind of one of these, uh, you know, remedies that, you know, has been passed down through people? I guess if it would help get some of the allergens, it can be mildly effective. But, you know, there's, it's not really a, a real definitive way to help treat eye bags. And um, another thing I was reading about, uh, the way you sleep at night, uh, the, the gravity uh, from sleeping on your back and the fluids draining in your, your uh, cavities in your face and around the body. Talk to me a little bit about how sleep position can affect uh, the well, backs. I'll say this, you know, we're upright most of the time, right? Gravity works on our body and the gravity will pull the fluid in our body generally down toward our feet. 
when you lay down at night, you know, the, the, the flu that is in our feet can distribute throughout this, the whole body and, and it can show up in the eye area as much. I mean, if anything, if you sleep up on a couple of pillows, that would probably help. So that's, that's another sleeping on your back then is, is, a uh, is advisable then for the uh, waking up with the less puffiness or less if, bags? If you were on a couple pillows, actually, because that would allow there to be less swelling that way. Good information. Uh, how about uh, makeup and stuff? Uh, does that uh, an, uh, affect bags and uh, sleeping with uh, makeup on? That does not really have an effect, no. No, no makeup. What about uh, alcohol use? How does that go? Alcohol also can allow us to take more fluid in, and so that's why sometimes when people have eye bags, they think that someone was out drinking, right? Mm -hmm. You hear that, I hear that all the time. I mean, I had this, <laughs> I had this patient one time who was a, a teacher, a local teacher, and, uh, and so he would come to class. He had these bags that were pretty large, and his students were say to him in the morning, which I don't think was very respectful, like, you know, so were you out drinking last now, teacher? <laughs> right. And, uh, and, you know, that's not really fair to him. That's what I, I, I tell you. I'm very passionate for me. For me, this is not narcissism all. This is communication. Mm -hmm. I love to help people with their faces so that their faces communicate better with the outside world. Anyway, I helped him, and then afterwards, he didn't get those comments anymore. Yeah. Um, got to take a, a quick break. I also got some other uh, points I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about like the cucumbers on the eyes and different types of creams for uh, bags. Sure. And then we're going to touch on uh, your uh, world renowned procedure for the treatment of festoons and stuff here. Uh, if you're just tuning in, you're listening uh, to Dr. Adam Shiner here on That Business Show with Jamie Mooney, where business becomes show business. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger and Company Incorporated, a family owned state certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their shop at home flooring sales service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American made well-born cabinets and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. Have you considered a reverse mortgage as part of your retirement financial plan? For homeowners age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage from Access Reverse Mortgage is a safe economical way to turn your home's equity into cash or monthly income. Access Reverse Mortgage is a family-owned company based right here in the Tampa Bay area for the past 10 years. They are A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and Florida's leading reverse mortgage provider. Call 727 Three four seven zero three zero five, or go to accessreverse.com to start your research today. NMLS number four five six six. That's seven two seven three four seven. 0305. Are you looking for a local real estate firm that knows the market and has your interests in mind? Then contact Jim McPeak at McPeak Real Estate Firm, a family-owned business whose agents have over 60-plus years of experience in the Tampa Bay market. Many of the agents are military veterans that know the VA process for buying a home and are proud to help our military members in any way they can. From residential to commercial real estate, McPeak Real Estate Firm is here to help. Contact Jim at 813-495-3875 and learn more at mcpeakteam.com. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage want you to experience the thrill of one day underwriting and the comfort in knowing your loans will be clear to close in record time. While a competition looks to a lost closing date, Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage focus on their 12-day clear to close. They do this by utilizing their world-class operations staff to underwrite your loan within six hours, process your loan in 12 days, and have your loan closed in time. Underwritten in six hours, cleared to close in 12 days. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. Hey there, it's Lynn Wise, the founder of Wise Business Advisors and Contractor Business Alliance. I am a certified value builder advisor, and I help business owners build a company that will allow them to have the business that they dreamed of when they started. Why did you go into business for yourself? I'm sure it was not to work 100 hours a week with no work-life balance and no financial freedom. What am I talking about? I'm talking about building a business that provides value to you and your family now and in the future. You can learn about the eight essential areas of a business that you must build to have a business that can be an asset for your future. Go to wisebusinessadvisors.com and take the Value Builder score. It is free and will deliver your score immediately on how you are doing on building a valuable business for you and your family. Or call me at 772-834-8513. 
to learn more about the Value Builder system. This report is brought to you by Dell. With the world's first virtually borderless Infinity Edge display, the new Dell XPS 13 with the latest Intel Core processors is amazing inside and out and the smallest 13-inch laptop on the planet, which is great news unless you're the competition. Shop now at dell.com slash XPS for business. From the Bright House Network's Traffic Center. Broken down vehicle on State Road 56, just east of 75. Belcher Road also has a broken down vehicle in the travel lanes between Tampa Road and Curlew. 49th Street dealing with a wreck at Roosevelt Boulevard, while 275 is showing the normal delays. See traffic problems, call Andrew, firm of Abrahamson and Newtowick Hillsboro Traffic Tip Line, 866-545-9595. Today, partly cloudy with a 20% rain chance, breezy, high 85. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 69. Tomorrow, a 20% rain chance, high 86. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back, everybody, to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Uh, find this show on here weekdays at 8 a.m. on 1250 WHNZ, and also learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com. Uh, currently talking with Dr. Adam Shiner. He is a laser eyelid and facial cosmetic surgeon on the treatment of eye bags and festoons and on the uh, first segment, we we're just kind of touching on non-surgical treatments and the effects of uh, different uh, things on eye bags. And uh, one thing uh, you see people do a lot is the uh, cucumbers on the eye trick. Is is that effective at all? And what's the, how does that supposed to work? Yeah, and so all these are really temporizing. Everything we talked about so far are temporizing measures, right? <clears throat> they can make things transiently better, but they don't really offer any permanent cure for it. But the co- nothing about a cucumber cold. Cold can cause constriction of vessels, which might improve it slightly. Okay, so it's not the cucumber, it's the, the cold uh, vegetable. So really anything, a piece oh, of squash. An ice, ice pack. An ice pack or yeah. anything. So there's nothing in a cucumber or no chemicals in there that, that's having a, uh, an effect then, correct? Right. Yeah, it's, I, had, <clears throat> I had a patient, um, uh, her name was Wilma, who was one of the first persons. It was actually the person I, I made for the, I did the treatment for the festoons for that video I talked about. And she was talking about how she used to get up She's in our area. She used to get up at like three in the morning, four in the morning. She had terrible festoons, uh, terrible these, and she would put ice packs on for about an hour or two because she really didn't like the the message it was giving out there. And then she'd go to work. Well, I mean that the ice doesn't really do that much, really, <laughs> unfortunately. But people do things like that. Yeah. Now, what role does genetics play in the formation of eye bags, and then ultimately <laughs> or, or festoons? Um, so uh, versus uh, exposure to uh, sunlight, things of that nature. Sun is well for eye bag. Let's talk about the two. So eye bags, you know, is something that happens to almost all of us as we get older. Usually around age forty, it starts to show up. Sometimes a little bit earlier. That has to do with anatomic issues with the fat around the lower eyelid pushing forward as we get older. Festoons are a little different. Festoons form on the cheek. There is, There are some people who develop this genetically who have a genetic predisposition to this, but a lot of people get this as a result of sun exposure over, their, you know, over time. In the area of the cheek, you know, there are muscles that are circular that go around the eye, and there are muscles that are tangential that or, or diagonal that go toward the corner of the mouth. They pull against each other over time. I think that combined with sun exposure on the face fracture the elastic fibers there and that's why i think we developed these festoons okay and so is it uh what type of uh, sunscreen is advisable then what type of spf should we we, we be using to uh you this, prevent these from getting worse right, this is a great this is a, this is a great thing to talk about so let's talk about the uv rays first right ultraviolet rays you know when the sun comes down on the earth with this visible light allows us to see each other right and there are these invi- invisible rays also called ultraviolet rays and those are the ones that warm our cheek you know, that we feel mm-hmm and there are three types of UV rays we, that we need to tell them about. UVC is one that comes down. Thankfully, that is really toxic to life, but that's absorbed mainly by the ozone. UVA is, um, is a very long wavelength. It's interesting. It can actually penetrate uh, clouds and car windows. So you can be in your car and still get UVA exposure. Mm-hmm. Um, it is one that will fracture elastic fibers and collagen fibers really deep in the skin. It's the one we call uh, UVA for, a- for skin aging. And there's UVB. The B is not as long wavelength. It will get into the upper skin, t- causes the skin to turn red or, or B for burn. So those are the, those are the I call it the ABCs of UV. Now, sun protection, <clears throat> you know, traditionally the SPF only refers to protection from UVB rays, which is important. But, you know, they were looking and they were seeing back in the 70s, 80s, people were wearing sun protection for UVB, but they were still getting a lot of cancers because the UVA was going right through. And that's actually a little bit more damaging wavelength. 
The sun blocks that I like are ones called mechanical blocks, one that, that have uh, micronized zinc, so zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. Um, those are really great because they work as soon as they go on the skin. You know, interestingly, in Europe, they actually have better sunscreens than we have here in the States. Um, there are some things that are happening with some acts in Congress where we should get some of those sunscreens right now, you know, hopefully soon. But right now what we have, these mechanical blocks are the ones I like the best. And what about the effects of smoking on eye bags? How does smoking make uh, eye bags get worse? Smoking, unfortunately, is really damaging to us in general. You know, it, it does cause, cause a lot of free radicals that will affect, um, you know, our lungs, our heart, our skin. Uh, so in that way, it probably potentiates what the sun is doing because it, it damages the collagen. Okay, and what about uh, store-bought uh, creams, things of that nature? Are they effective in the uh, treatment of uh, eye bags? Um, you know, people will talk about things like Preparation H, right, uh, that you'll put on the skin. And yet, temporarily for, uh, for uh, uh, half an hour, an hour, it can have a little bit of effect of tightening things, but it does do, doesn't really um, deal with the underlying cause of what's going on there. So yes, temporarily that can have a small effect, but really the best way to deal with these is really surgical options. Okay, so the, the preparation H is a, a treatment. That was something I uh, learned about on your uh, site ju uh, just last night. Also, I want to make a reference uh, to your site, uh, adamshinermd.com, where uh, people can uh, get some more, uh, more information on this, adamshinermd.com. And, of course, we will always get this up on the uh, show recap. If you're watching us on the uh, live stream, uh, we've got uh, some uh, pictures uh, from the uh, site and everything up. And um, in the second half of the show, I want to talk about your uh, procedure, um, you know, how you, you came to uh, get this world-renowned procedure and everything. But you've been featured on... Um, Dr. Oz, uh, the Howard Stern Show, and your business is kind of acting as kind of like a little engine for Tampa, drawing in people, international clients, things of that nature. Talk to me about how your appearances on these uh, national programs has helped you know fuel your practice. Yeah, this idea of Festoon was really cryptic for a lot of doctors and patients, and there wasn't really a, an, a way to treat this. I think, interesting, if I showed up on the Dr. Oz Show and I was a breast surgeon and I showed a new breast implant, I don't think it would have the same impact as what I have. I, Thankfully, because I have this this technique, I'm a resource for people from around the globe. And being on a show like that let a lot of people know about this condition. And so I think that's what really led to it. I mean, at the time, actually, I penned an article that is on Dr. Oz's site about festoons. And that, that if people put in those words, they tend to find me. I mean, I, I was mentioning in the break that I have a guy coming in from Beirut, actually, in about a month or so. I mean, people come from all over the globe here. The nice thing is that they stay in the hotels here. And um, interestingly, I have these... Uh, I have the hotels almost competing for each other because the patients, when they come, they stay for about 10 days. And that's unusual in the hotel industry. And so I had one hotel that was providing transportation. So then the other hotel started to provide transportation. In fact, they pick them up from the airport and they drive them to every post-operative visit. And then one decided to start providing uh, uh, breakfast. The other one provided breakfast. And then one started providing dinner also. Like, well, uh, heavy hors d'oeuvres like four nights a week, like a manager's reception. And so I, it's just great, though. We have a lot of, you know, the community is, is kind of behind me, and I help a lot of uh, hotels here and a lot of the restaurants from the people who fly in and, and see us here. Yeah, I mean, that's great for the uh, community, and uh, part of my show is highlighting, you know, with successful uh, business owners and entrepreneurs and things they're doing to make a difference for the uh, community. And last night when I typed in the uh, word festoon, just doing my research and everything, I mean, your stuff was pretty much all page one, you know. I mean, there's all kinds of different things to that, so. Right, and and I'm very fortunate that way. I mean, partly that started with that video that was serendipitously just ended up everywhere. And how did you uh, get on Dr. Oz? Did he come to you and, and Stern? How did Are they finding you naturally? Or? Yeah. I had, once I started to um, get known for this, I did hire a, a PR person to help me get the message out. And I did all of the stations in Tampa, um, except for one. And then, um, and then we started talking with the Oz Show, and they were interesting. They said they wanted an exclusive. But when I first met with them, they were holding on to it for a while. We met them in around August of this year, of uh, that year. And it took until about December for it to, for them to decide to do the segment. Uh, I actually reached out to them because then uh, NBC came to me here and they wanted to do a segment on the festoons. And as a result, we talked to them and in, then they, it, I think, kind of in, incentivized them to move forward with it. So that's when we were on the show. Yeah, I want to talk more about this uh, pre procedure coming back from the break. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Hi, welcome to Jaegers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Jaegers, our primary business is hardwood flooring although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tile, stone, 
what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area. Kaufman stay at La Quinta Inns and Suites? Because only La Quinta sends Bob a ready-for-you alert the second his room is ready. And when Bob knows exactly when he can check in and refresh before a monster of a meeting, do you know what he does? And it just comes down to digital flexibility. In conclusion... Cannonball! Woo! He makes a big splash! La Quinta is ready for you, so you'll be ready for business. The ready-for-you alert only at LQ.com. This report is brought to you by Dell. With the world's first virtually borderless infinity edge display, the new Dell XPS 13 with the latest Intel Core processors is amazing inside and out and the smallest 13-inch laptop on the planet, which is great news, unless you're the competition. Shop now at dell.com slash XPS for business. From the Bright House Network's Traffic Center. 70 times southbound now has a broken down truck around Himes. Backups are starting at I-4. I'm also seeing southbound delays Fletcher and DeBird. And northbound is heavy from the Howard Franklin up to Lois. In Clearwater, 49th Street at Roosevelt Boulevard now has debris all over the roadway from a crash. See traffic problems call the injury firm of Abrahamson and Edward Hills Road Traffic Tip Line, 866-545-9595. <laughs> Winds weather center forecast, a little breeze today. We'll see a 20% chance of showers and sunshine with a few scattered clouds, high reaching the mid to upper 80s. Overnight lows, upper 60s. Impact Radio, 1250 winds, WHNZ. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back, everybody, to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Find the show on here weekdays at 8 a.m. on 1250 WHNZ, and also learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com. Uh, currently talk with a uh, leading uh, eyelid and uh, facial cosmetic surgeon, Dr. Adam Shiner. Um, learn more about him over at adamshinermd.com. He is a world-renowned uh, uh, facial cosmetic surgeon uh, in the treatment of festoons, uh, which is uh, drooping eye bags, things of that nature. And on the uh, first uh, segment there, we're talking about pretty much just eye bags in general and the uh, treatments for them and causes, things of that nature. And uh, we've peppered in discussions of festoons. So let's let's take the, the conversation down the uh, the festoon path and, and your, your treatment and how this is so unique. First of all, let's distinguish now between uh, the difference between an eye bag you know, that everybody seems to have and festoons. Let's uh, let's clarify that difference. Right. So you know, eye bags form as a result usually of of age, and that is fat that pushes forward underneath the lower lid um, as we grow older. You know, festoons form as a result mainly of sun exposure. Or there's some genetic factors that it, uh, address that deal with that with that too. A second, if you push on an eye bag, it, it's soft. You can actually it's it's squishy. Uh, uh, you can push it in. Whereas the um, uh, or it's more firm, I'm sorry, but the festoon is kind of usually squishy and you can kind of move it side to side. You can't do that with eye bags. Uh, and they, so there's different ways that we treat these two things. Okay. And so your procedure, tell me about how your procedure works, first of all. Yeah, what I do is I very often the eye bags come with festoons. So I do surgery to sometimes move fat or remove fat. I usually do that with a laser. I do a lot of laser procedures because lasers have the ability to seal blood vessels and nerves. Uh, when I'm using them for surgery, and that's really nice because people have less pain and less swelling when it's done this way. So I often do surgery to deal with the eye bags, and then I use on the outside skin to help where the festoons form on the cheek, I'll use lasers, and I'll actually injure the skin on purpose with a laser. 
And then I have the body heal itself. And when it heals itself, it actually grows new elastic and new collagen fibers that, that tighten that skin. Now, how did you come about uh, developing this procedure? I'm always interested in how doctors develop these types of things and, and trying them out for the first time, things of that nature. How did the, uh, this come together, the research and development on this procedure? Well, I, I've been doing this idea of, of laser resurfacing of the skin for, you know, for almost you know, 17, 18 years now. I first learned about this really when I trained, I mentioned this person, Sterling Baker, who I trained with out in Oklahoma City. I learned this first from him, and then I kept improving this in my in my practice over the years. It goes back to that story I told you with my friend who was on that show. He didn't think there was any treatment. I was treating this for the last decade. I didn't know it was rare. I didn't know that this was something that was hard to fix until he told me that this was something that he thought was hard to fix. And then I thought, then that really woke me up to the fact that, wow, I could help a lot of people with this. Now, you say festoons are often misdiagnosed. What are they misdiagnosed as? Well, people will often say that uh, that they can help people with eye bags, and people assume they can help the festoons at the same time. But if there is a very specific way to help festoons, if it's not used, then that's the part that's misdiagnosed, and that people will say, you know, or doctors will say there's no treatment for this. That's the other thing that, that I call in terms of being misdiagnosed. Now, is, uh, is the uh, treatment, is this a, an outpatient procedure? Yes, it is something that we do. I mean, I can do it in my office. A lot of these I do. In, I have a surgical center, you know, adjacent to my office. A lot of I'll do them a lot there. And does the, do you have to come in multiple times? Is it as a one uh, one time treatment? Yeah, it's usually a one time treatment that we do. And listen, once I injure the skin, there is a recovery process involved. So I like to have them near me. Most people who fly in will stay here about ten days or so. Yeah, talk to me about you. Know, you obviously you know, world renowned. You got people flying in from um, you know all over the world for this procedure. Tell me about how you're able to uh, you know uh, uh, accommodate patients uh, you know from overseas, things of that nature. I mean, the great thing in Tampa, we have a lot of great partners here. So I have hotels that have sort of stepped up and been able to meet the needs of my patients. And so I have a lot of uh, you know it starts really where people contact us, and we have uh, HIPAA compliant encrypted websites that people will send their photos and send their images and their medical information to. And then my staff will communicate with them. I do assessments of the patients. Um, they tell them what I think I see. Now, when they fly in, if there's something different, sometimes we have to bring that up and we have to alter a little bit. But usually we're pretty on target. Uh, and then they fly in the day before surgery. I evaluate them. We make any adjustments that we have to do in terms of the plan. And then we usually do the surgery the next day. And then they'll usually fly back about 10 or 11 days later. Are you able to guarantee results? Uh, or is there some people that just do not respond to the treatment? I think everyone responds uh, uh, to skin tightening. And certain people respond better than others. Okay. And uh, talk to me a little bit about like uh, the cost of the procedure. Is uh, This is obviously a cosmetic procedure, so I doubt insurance comes into play at all. Tell me a little bit about this. Right. Yeah, this is something that's considered more elective. I mean, the festoon alone usually starts at around 5000 and then if we're doing other procedures, it can be up from there. Okay. And uh, what about men versus women? Is this uh, something that you see uh, you know, more in women versus uh, men? Tell me about this. Yeah, I think that I see it everywhere. I'll tell you, Jamie, if you, once you start looking at these things, you look around the world, you're going to see them everywhere. <laughs> we see these festoons everywhere. Anyway, yeah, I help both men and women with this. I, I had an interesting uh, uh, story where I had this uh, I had a federal judge who came to see me, um, and he had problems with these eye bags and festoons. And people were saying to him, you know, Your Honor, do you want to take a, a recess because uh, it looks like you're really tired? And he <laughs> right. says, Well, I, had to, you know, I don't feel tired. So he came to see me. I helped him. He's in his seventies, mm -hmm. and so uh, I helped him with the surgery, and he did great. But I will tell you, it took him from his seventies. He started afterwards. He looked like he was in his fifties. Well unintended consequences. He's married to a woman for a long time, and his wife was in her 70s. Well, when they were out socially, actually people who didn't know them would come up to me and say, uh, hey, can you introduce me to your mom? And uh, I will tell you that a woman never wants to be known as anything but the beautiful wife of their partner, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so she came to see me, and I'll tell you, not only can I use this laser for students, I can use this for improving the skin in general. And so I did this procedure, not just on the lower lids, but on her whole face. I did procedure on her, and, and she did fantastic. And now there's this very cute matching pair that are in their 70s, but look like they're in their 50s. Now, what do you call, is there a name for this procedure? I, I mentioned, uh, you know, on your site there, you call something a reset procedure. Tell me, uh, what is the name of this specific procedure? Right, so I call it the, re I call it the reset procedure for okay. festoons. You know, the reason we came with this word reset is because, um, a couple of years ago, I was doing a, a surgery on a woman. I was working on her upper eyelids and her lower eyelids, and I used the laser on the lower skin, and it looked great. Uh, she came back two years later, and she was erupting in skin lesions all over her face, um, terrible lesions everywhere, except the area where I had treated two years prior. And that woke me up. I said, 
I said, this is interesting. I knew that it would help the skin, but what I think happened is when I did that laser, I improved the skin in that area two years prior, and then it stayed young, basically. And so I'm now using this to improve people with sun damage in general. People are now coming to me not just for the festoons, but also to remove years of sun damage. A lot of us, you know, when we were growing up, we thought that there was a healthy tan, right? And we mm-hmm. were out, and that was really a bad bill of goods. There are these, there's this damage that we have deep in our skin that will come up as cancers in the future. And what I love about this procedure is I can get below the level of those lesions, get the skin to start over. And not only does it look better, but the skin is fundamentally healthier afterwards. Now, during the procedure, how long does, uh, does it, are you under the laser? Is it a 15-minute you know, procedure? Or 10, I mean, festoons only are maybe about uh, under 10 minutes. Okay, so you're on the table for about 10 minutes? Yeah, well, if I'm doing festoons alone, a lot of times I'll combine it with other procedures. So it could be about 40 minutes. 40 minutes or so? Procedures. Is yeah. there? a laser you know i was watching the procedure on dr oz where you're using an avocado to kind right. of you know de- demonstrate the use of the laser uh is there a lot of pain involved do you have to use a, an anesthetic uh, on people we, we definitely use anesthesia um i do certain nerve blocks and certain local anesthesia to make them comfortable when we do it out of my surgery center we usually give them something from iv to make them sleepy so not really aware of what's going on during the procedure too. okay so people can can people that are extremely nervous uh, be put completely under so they're not even aware or do you have possi- to, yeah that's can? possible too yes okay. Yeah. All right. Is this similar to uh, you know, the way they also uh, treat, uh, remove tattoos, things of that nature? Is it the same procedure, you know, when they, when they hit with the laser and they damage the skin? And Yeah. It, in a certain way, I mean, it's interesting. Lasers uh, are, for medical uses actually aim at different things. So the one that I use aims at water. The ones that uh, treat tattoos aim at pigment in the skin. So it, this, they're both using lasers. That's similar. Uh, but there's a little different way in, in the way it happens. And how have doctors uh, traditionally been treating uh, festoons? Uh, and are you the only one utilizing this technique right now, or have, others have adopted this? Yeah, I've taught this <clears throat> at a bunch of meetings, and not a lot of the people are picking this up. I often call this the stepchild of the cosmetic surgery industry because <laughs> I think people would rather treat, uh, you know, in the cosmetic surgery industry, they'd rather do breast augmentation and tummy tucks. They don't want to deal with these things. This is hard. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm happy that I'm a resource and I have the skill set to help people with this, though. And how has uh, demand and response been? I mean, you're obviously got people coming in from uh, across the seas and stuff, but I mean, are you so busy that you're going to have to eventually bring in another doctor and say, hey, man, I need to teach you how to do this too? Yeah, I mean, thankfully, I have a lot, I can do this quickly. So, and I have a finely tuned machine, so I can help a lot of people with what I'm doing. And what is it about this procedure that is so unique? I mean, is there no other doctors that do uh, laser treatment on festoons or on, uh, on facial eyelids, things of that nature? Yeah, I think what happened was I was good at doing this ablative resurfacing, and I evolved it into treating festoons. The rest of the industry back in the uh, late 90s really didn't like dealing with these wounds, so they abandoned the technology. So whereas I kept evolving this technology, the in- most people just gave up on it. And so my skill set is so far beyond what most people have at this point. And what are the uh, benefits to this? I know you've got a number of different talking points on this, but tell me on what the, uh, the laser treatment is going to do to the, the facial region and the festoons after uh, completion of the procedure. Well, it can tighten the skin there, which is nice. But fundamentally, <clears throat> when we, what I was mentioning about before is that we get under the level of sun damage. When the sun hits our skin, the UVA rays we talked about before will create um, something called thymine dimers. Um, they're bi- there's a binding of the DNA in the top layer of the skin. Those cells then become irregular and they can lead to skin cancers. Well, <clears throat> when I do this procedure, I'm below the levels of those damaged cells. And when the skin grows itself back, there are, none of that sun damage is there. So the skin comes back fundamentally healthier. And that's what I love about this procedure too. Wow, this is just some great information. Uh, i got to take a, another uh, quick uh, break. Uh, coming back from the break, though, I want to talk to you about some of the other uh, procedures that you offer. I mean, you do more than just uh, facial cosmetic surgery, correct? So, sure. Yeah, so I want to talk to you about some of those other things, Botox and things of that nature. Uh, you're listening uh, to That Business Show. We're talking with Dr. Adam Shiner. He is a laser eyelid and facial cosmetic surgeon. Learn more about him over at adamshinermd.com. And again, you're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their Shop at Home Flooring Sales Service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made, well-born cabinets. And all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. Have you considered a reverse mortgage as part of your retirement financial plan? 
For homeowners age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage from Access Reverse Mortgage is a safe economical way to turn your home's equity into cash or monthly income. Access Reverse Mortgage is a family-owned company based right here in the Tampa Bay area for the past 10 years. They are A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and Florida's leading reverse mortgage provider. Call 727 727- Three four seven zero three zero five, or go to accessreverse dot com to start your research today. NMLS number four five six six. That's seven two seven three four seven. Zero three zero five. Are you looking for a local real estate firm that knows the market and has your interests in mind? Then contact Jim McPeak at McPeak Real Estate Firm, a family-owned business whose agents have over 60-plus years of experience in the Tampa Bay market. Many of the agents are military veterans that know the VA process for buying a home and are proud to help our military members in any way they can. From residential to commercial real estate, McPeak Real Estate Firm is here to help. Contact Jim at 813-495-3875 and learn more at mcpeakteam.com. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage want you to experience the thrill of one-day underwriting and the comfort in knowing your loans will be clear to close in record time. While a competition looks to a lost closing date, Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage focus on their 12-day clear to close. They do this by utilizing their world-class operations staff to underwrite your loan within six hours, process your loan in 12 days, and have your loan closed in time. Underwritten in six hours, cleared to close in 12 days. Bud Spriggs and Movement Mortgage. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. Hey there, it's Lynn Wise, the founder of Wise Business Advisors and Contractor Business Alliance. I'm a certified value builder advisor, and I help business owners build a company that will allow them to have the business that they dreamed of when they started. Why did you go into business for yourself? I'm sure it was not to work 100 hours a week with no work-life balance and no financial freedom. What am I talking about? I'm talking about building a business that provides value to you and your family now and in the future. You can learn about the eight essential areas of a business that you must build to have a business that can be an asset for your future. Go to wisebusinessadvisors.com and take the Value Builder score. It is free and will deliver your score immediately on how you are doing on building a valuable business for you and your family. Or call me at 772-834-8513 to learn more about the Value Builder system. From the Bright House Network's Traffic Center. 275 southbound exit ramp to Ashley Drive now has an accident blocking part of the roadway. I'm seeing backup starting at I-4. Southbound also dealing with a broken down truck at Himes Avenue with those backups bleeding into your I-4 slowdowns. I-4 westbound looks jammed from 50th heading into 275. And look out for a broken down vehicle, Belcher Road, right between Tampa and Curlew. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abrahamson and Utah Hillsborough traffic tip line 866-545-9595. Today, partly cloudy with a 20% rain chance, breezy, high 85. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 69. Tomorrow, a 20% rain chance, high 86. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNC. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. Welcome back, everybody, again to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Again, find this show on here weekdays at 8 a.m. on 1250 WHNZ. And also, you can learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com. Also, you can catch uh, past shows over there and watch us live in studio. Just click on the live stream button and you'll see all the action going on here in the uh, studio, plus all the uh, images and things we put up on the uh, live stream that if you're listening uh, uh, on the radio or on the iHeartMedia app that you won't see. So, again, tampabayradio.com for uh, the live stream as well as the audio as well. Uh, currently talking with Dr. Adam Shiner. He is a laser eyelid and facial cosmetic surgeon. And learn more about him and his uh, treatment uh, of festoons and a lot of other stuff that he does. Does in addition to uh, just the, uh, the the treatment of festoons over at adamshinermd.com. And uh, Dr. Shiner, you're also the author of uh, a book, The True Definition of Beauty, um, Facial Cosmetic Treatments, Transformational Role in Modern Beauty and Communication. 
and obviously what you're doing with the festoons is a cosmetic procedure, but there's a lot of importance in facial, uh, the presentation of the face uh, in, in everyday nonverbal communication. So let's talk about that. Right. You know, when we talk with each other, even as we're talking, you know, 7% of what you're hearing is my words, you know, 38% is my verbal tone. Right. And uh, 55% is this nonverbal cues that we we give each other and we're constantly evaluating each other's face. When we see each other, what our subconscious brain does is we look at each other's eyes and mouth first. We kind of appreciate the skin and facial contours secondly. Those areas, the eyes and mouth, are the most critical parts of the face to improve in terms of the way that the world's gonna to relate to us. So if we have heavy upper lids or baggy lower lids, that can make us look tired when we're not tired. I love helping those things. If we have a downturn to the mouth, it can make us look sad or mad when we don't feel that way. Those are things I can help too. I do a lot of, I actually teach about Botox and fillers. I work for companies out of New York where I instruct other doctors how to do these things. And some of those are really, really helpful. I can do things with Botox where I can raise the brows with Botox and show off the eyes more. I do procedures where I can help uh, add volume to the face. And that is amazing in terms of how that can turn a face around when I do that. This book I wrote about the true definition of beauty is really a guide for patients. You know, there the idea of, of real beauty is really uh, timeless. It goes back to the time of the Renaissance. You know, back uh, in the Renaissance, there was uh, actually a mathematician, Leonardo Fibonacci, in the 1200s, who uh, borrowed some concepts from Asia and from India and brought them back to, they were actually city-states back then in Italy. But if it wasn't for him, you know, he brought these the alphanumeric system back there, we would have been using Roman numerals today. But we don't. We actually use the alphanumeric system because of Leonardo Fibonacci. He's from Pisa, Italy. Actually, we did a family trip there. My wife was wanted to climb the, the Tower of Pisa, which we did. I was excited because Leonardo Fibonacci had a mausoleum there. I was able to see a statue of him. Anyway, he took concepts that he found there and had this thing called the Fibonacci sequence, which uh, came up with uh, something called the golden ratio derived from it. And what they thought, they called this a golden ratio because they found in nature, a lot of things in nature had this ratio of 1 to 1.618. The branching of uh, a tree, the arrangement of the petals on a flower all have this ratio. Well, they started using it uh, in facial painting and they found that the, the faces they painted according to these ratios looked more beautiful. Well, I use this all the time in my procedures too because there is something iconic about this. I don't want when my patients have procedures to look awkward or done i want them to look i want it to be powerful but look very subtle at the same time so that people can't really put their finger on what happened to them they'll say well did you change your hair or did, mm -hmm. are those new earrings you have i don't right. want them to be like she had something done and if i pay attention to these ratios that's how we get those sort of uh, results. And you cover a number of uh, different uh, points in this book. Uh, one of them is, uh, you know, how to choose a surgeon for your different procedures and how to know if you're a candidate for, you know, cosmetic surgery of this nature. Tell me a little bit about what people need to consider before consider doing a procedure such as this. Right. I, I think in terms of the candidates for these <clears throat> procedures, if you feel that your face is not reflecting the true you, right, if you look tired but don't feel tired, if you look mad but you don't feel mad, that sort of communication discordance, I think that's a great uh, reason for considering these procedures. In terms of you know, looking at physicians who are gonna do this, there's a lot of people in this, in this market. There's a lot of people who just get into this market from other fields, you know, uh, allergists, ER docs, uh, um, uh, their internal medicine docs again this. And, and I, listen, I, I, would, I train these people because I want them to make sure that we're giving all these procedures a good name, but really you want to go to the person who is doing the most of the procedure you're looking for. That's usually the best advice that I can give. Right. And okay, I'm over at your site again, and let's talk about some of the other stuff. we got a, a few minutes left, so I want to make sure people know that you do more than just uh, a festoon treatment. And again, learn more about uh, Dr. Shiner over at adamshinermd.com. Uh, we mentioned uh, Botox. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, this procedure. And, and, and the you know you hear a lot of negative things around Botox, hear some positive things. Tell me a little bit about about Botox treatment. Yeah, Botox is great because I don't use Botox for lines, I use it for facial rebalancing. So if I can get the, the brows to raise, show off the eyelids, that's what I love doing. And if I can help the corners of the mouth come up with Botox, that's the things I love doing. Botox is actually a very safe procedure. It was used first actually in the field of ophthalmology for kids who had crossed eyes. Um, it's been used very safely for you know over 20 years. Um, I really love what Botox can do. I'll tell you another interesting thing is that when I treat women or men with Botox in the brow area, a lot of them find their headaches are better. And there's actually treatment for migraines with Botox. And I have really? a lot of patients who come to me who have problems with migraines uh, and I will do Botox for them and I get the migraines to quiet down for a period of four to six months. Interesting. I'm also uh, looking at some of your non-surgical treatments, uh, microneedling. Uh, what is this? 
You know, a lot of the procedures that we do um, improving the skin involve injuring the skin and having it repair itself. So I do that with lasers. Well, that has recovery at times associated with it. Microneedling is another way to injure the skin with little needles, and it creates a little wound, and the body heals the wound, and the skin Is this related to acupuncture somehow? Not really acupuncture, but it is a way for getting the skin to come back uh, healthier. Not quite as dramatic as what I'm doing with my laser procedure, but this doesn't have any downtime. We kind of love that. We, mar we marry this with something called... Uh, platelet-rich plasma or PRP, and that can give our uh, that's very powerful in allowing the skin to renew itself without a lot of downtime. Yeah, see that uh, that was another procedure I was going to ask. Uh, platelet-rich plasma. What is what do you, what do you mean when you say that specifically? So what we do is we can get products from a person's blood uh, that involve healing factors that that when we uh, select them out and put them on the skin or in the skin, it actually recruits. Our body has tons of stem cells. Most of it actually lives in our fat. We actually have more stem cells in our fat than in our bone marrow. And, but they need a place to go. So when we put these, this PRP with these little messengers called cytokines on them, it tells the body's stem cells to rush to that area and make that area better. Yeah. And a uh, five-minute nose job, what's this whole procedure about? I love this. Because I, was just on, <laughs> I was just on ABC Action News with this, actually. Mm -hmm. They come and film me about this right. about a month or so ago. I can use soft tissue fillers to straighten uh, noses that look irregular. If we have a nose that looks bad, it can actually take our attention away from the eyes and the mouth, the two more, most important part of the face for communicating. And I love the fact that I can use these fillers to help that. My favorite use is actually people who've had bad nose jobs. I can use these fillers to, to uh, smooth out irregularities. And uh, when there's no surgical option, this procedure is fantastic for that. What are the, uh, are most of your uh, patients for these other treatments, uh, women, do you have a lot of men coming through for these other things? What are, what are, what's trending in the uh, in uh, Tampa region for men for these types of things? Yeah, I have more and more men coming in because you know, it's competitive work, work environment out there. And there's older men who are competing with younger men for positions in the company. And they don't want to be perceived as tired or old or less vibrant when they, when they have all this experience, and a lot of times they're coming in to, to see me. And you also offer, I'm saying, different uh, skincare services, products, things like that. What are you? What do you promote uh, use for? Uh, what type of products do you promote uh, use of for uh, skincare? Yeah, we have some great medical skin products. Um, the best ones are these things, including things with Retin A or or Tretinoin and Hydroquinones. And we have a lot of medical products in our office that are use that. We also have these things called broad-based light, which is a way also without downtime to treat the skin. We can treat red spots on the skin, brown spots on the skin. We actually have research out of Stanford showing that not only does it improve the, pin, the, the appearance of the skin, but it actually makes the skin revert back to a younger genetic state also also without the downtime, so with my bigger procedures. Okay. We got about a minute left. Uh, for people that are looking uh, for some more information, talk to me about a new patient onboarding process. Do you offer any type of free consultation? Is there, uh, talk to me about how you know, onboarding works well, for Well, I will patients. tell you, you know, for, for your listeners, if they mention that you heard the show, I will, give, I will give a free consult. Usually it's about $150 for the consult, but if they mention they came from you, from your show, your listeners only, I will offer that. Oh, so, hey, thank you very much. I wasn't uh, expecting that, but there you go. A free consultation with uh, Dr. Adam Shiner, $150 value. Just mentioned that you uh, heard him here on the radio show, That Business Show with uh, Jamie Maloney. Well, uh, Dr. Shiner, this has been a, a great interview. I learned a lot today and uh, some great information for my listeners. I'm sure people got a lot of stuff out of this stuff. Well, today. Jamie, hey, thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it and really, really appreciate talking to all your listeners. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. And again, if uh, you're just tuning in, we were just talking with uh, Dr. Adam Shiner. He is a laser eyelid and facial cosmetic surgeon, and he's also a local business owner and entrepreneur and uh, now world-renowned uh, uh, f um, a facial cosmetic surgeon. So look him up over at Adam shinermd.com and also mentioned that you heard him on the uh, radio show today and uh, you'll get a free consultation $150 value. Uh, thank you all for tuning in this morning here uh, and on That Business Show with Jamie Maloney. I'll catch you all back in here again at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning so uh, please uh, have a great day and I'll see you all back in here tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. on That Business Show with Jamie Maloney where business becomes show business.